Okay, this is the practice test for the second Excel test. This is over the last six days of Excel, and uh, one of those days we did dates and date functions. One day we did pivot tables. Uh, one day we did uh, financial functions. Uh, we did uh, some database uh, functions and uh, advanced filtering. Uh, we did the lookup function, and we did 3D uh, worksheets. So those are the six things that will be on the test and this is the practice test. Let's get started. Put a formula in B2 that will always display the current date regardless of when the spreadsheet is open. What's well, the today function? So we'll just go here and we'll type in equals today and you got to have a pair of parentheses with function name even if there are no arguments. Go ahead and hit the enter key and I am doing this on October 16th 2007. Uh, the next item. The um, Birthdays in column C are date serial numbers and format them as a day, a three letter month, and a four digit year. So first let's subtract them and then right click and we will go to format cells and we want dates and we want uh, a day, a three letter month, and a four digit year. Well there's a two digit year. Let's see if we can get a four digit year in there somewhere. There it is, last item. Okay, click on OK, and now they're all formatted as dates. Put a formula in column D that will compute the age of the person uh, that the person will be after his birthday this year. So we just need to subtract the two years. Uh, we cannot use 2017 as the current year. This needs to work uh, even if we come in next year or the year after or the year after and try this. So I've got to rely on the month of this up here. So I'm going to do equals. Uh, I'm sorry, the year. So year of dollar sign B dollar sign 2. That's formula, or that cell is not moving. Minus the year of, spell it right, the year of this person's birthday. And so if it is 2017 and he was born in 1992, that would make him 25 years old. Okay, and then we can just copy that down. But before we do that, uh, we're going to do column E and then we'll copy them both down at the same time. Put a formula in column E that will display the logical value true if the person has a birthday this month and false otherwise. So if all you need is true and false, you do not e need to use the if function. Uh, so this has to work uh, no matter what. So I want to compare the month of this with the month of this and see if they're equal. So uh, it's October, and so the month of this will be 10, and the month of this will be 10, and I want true to be over there. So I want those to be equal. So uh, it's just just a comparison. So uh, the month from dollar sign B dollar sign 2, I want to know if it's equal to the month of this person's birthday, which in this case is C5. And it should be false because November is not equal to October. So now let's take those and let's fill them all the way down. And we can go through there and we can look for anybody who has a birthday in October. And there's one and it's true. And there's one and it's true. And there's another October. And October and uh, looks like one more. Okay, so it appears to be working. Okay, now let's go to the second sheet and we have a pivot table. So we want to use a pivot table to determine the total value of each stock type. Well, here's the type column. And um, for the value, so I want uh, each letter that occurs in this column to appear once. And then I want the total current value, the sum. So I'm just going to use this column and this column. It's a pivot table, so you don't have to select anything before you start. Just put the cursor in the table, and that's on the Insert tab, and go to Pivot Table. And if you start off with the cursor in the data, it will select it for you, and we're always going to put them on a new worksheet, just like we did on the homework assignments. So click on OK. And I said I want the type, and I want the total current value and uh, it's doing the sum, which is what it always wants to do by default. And uh, it doesn't say anything about doing this in the instructions, but I like to make it easy to read. So we'll just click on our uh, counting format and we don't need decimal places. So now it's a little bit easier to read and that's it for the pivot table. Um, so let's go on to our functions. 
and we have some financial functions here and on the homework template that I gave you uh, there were some formulas in here for calculating the rate per period and the number of periods uh, those are not here so uh, we're gonna have to put those in ourselves so uh, let's read the problem see if we can identify the stuff that goes over here um, twenty-five thousand dollars is what we're gonna invest so I need to put twenty-five thousand here and if I leave without adding anything to it so my regular payment would be zero and it's going to compound at eight percent annually eight percent uh, oh and it's quarterly and it's for 10 years so let's do 10 and the number of periods per year is going to be four instead of 12 because we're doing it quarterly and the rate per period then is going to be the annual rate up here divided by the number of periods per year so if it's eight percent a year it's going to be two percent a quarter so just divide eight by four total number of periods is going to be the years times the periods per year we should get 40 for that so i'm going to do equals uh 10 times periods per year is four i get 40 and then i want to know if this is at the end or beginning and it's at the end and end is the number zero so let's put the number zero here and then I want to know what I'm going to have at the end of that time. Well, the amount that you have at the end is always the future value. So let's go to our formulas tab here. And let's pull up uh, financial functions. And let's go to future value, FV. And then the rate, remember, is always the rate per period, not the annual rate. So click on the 2%. Uh, the number of periods is 40, not the number of years. The payment is always a negative number, uh, but in this case, it's not going to make any difference because it's zero. Uh, the present value is how much uh, you are investing right now, and this is a savings problem. So this is like a bunch of payments that we've already made, so that should have a minus sign in front of it as well. And then the type is going to be this zero or 01 down here, and click on OK. And I will end up with $55,200 at the end of the 10 years. So a little more than doubles in the 10-year period. So that was a future value problem. Now let's go to uh, the second one. And uh, we're trying to figure out the monthly payment. That's going to be the PMT function. Uh, we're going to borrow 30000 So we'll put that's the present value. And the ending balance on a loan is always zero because you pay it off. The annual rate is 10%. I think this has already been formatted as percent, so I just need to type 10. Uh, the number of years is 10 years. And uh, number of periods per year, we're doing monthly payments, so it's going to be 12. And the rate per period then is going to be the annual rate up here divided by the periods per year. Okay. The total number of periods is going to be a formula and that's going to be 10 times 12 is 120 and we are doing this at the end which means we put a zero in here whoops let's try it again and then we want to compute the monthly payment so that's going to be the payment function let's go to financial and we can scroll down until we find pmt and the rate is the rate per period. So click on that. And the number of periods is 120. And the present value on a loan is always a positive number. And the future value is the zero we got here. And the type is going to be uh, at the end of the month. And click on OK. And we get negative $396.45. And payment is always negative. So that's the reason it's a negative sign. And if you don't want the negative sign, then you just go up there and put a minus in front of your formula, and it'll turn everything around and make it a positive. Okay, and then the third one on this page is um, we want to figure out how much we can borrow, and that's going to be the present value. So uh, we're kind of working backwards here. We know that we can afford to make monthly payments of 400. That's going to be our payment. And... Um, we're going to pay it back in monthly payments for four years. So monthly payments is 12. The number of years is going to be four years. And the annual rate is 4%. And I want to know the rate per period. Well, that's going to be the annual rate divided by the number of periods per year. So a third of a percent. And the total number of periods is going to be the number of years times the number of periods per year. And... 12 years, or I'm sorry, four years at 12 payments a year is going to be 48 payments. Uh, the ending balance on a loan is going to be zero. 
and uh, beginning or end and we are doing this at the end of the month again so I'm going to put zero there again and now I want to figure out what the present value of that is so let's go to our financial functions up here and scroll down to PV and the rate is uh, the rate per period remember and the number of periods is 48 and the payment is always a negative number and that's 400 and the future value is what we're going to have what we're going to owe at the end the ending balance and the type is going to be the zero here and then go ahead and click on OK. And so it looks like uh, if that's what you can afford to make in payments, then that's how much you can afford to borrow. OK, let's go on to our DB. Uh, so this is use an advanced filter to determine which stocks in the S category or the H category have a total current value of 10,000 or more okay s or h and a current value of ten thousand or more so this needs to be greater than or equal to ten thousand and the category has to be an s or an h and doesn't care if it's uppercase or lowercase um, so that's an or which means they have to be on separate rows but we want to have the same value for both of them so we got to put greater or equal to ten thousand here and hit enter and so if I put the cursor in here and I go to my uh, data tab and I do an advanced filter and uh, if I start off with the cursor in the data which I did it'll select the list range correctly and I got to tell it what the criteria range is and the criteria range is these column headings and the values that are underneath them and click on the button again and uh, click on OK and if you look at these all of the numbers over here should be 10,000 or more, and the only values you see over here should be S and H, and so it looks like we're doing that right. Now, I want to count those. Okay, so these are all D functions. D functions use this uh, advanced filter, and I want to count the number of stocks. That's going to be a D count. So let's go to our uh, formulas, and let's go to, and this is the one that doesn't have a book. So you got to go over here, and we want... Um, database and we want uh, I think count yes we want to know the number of shares so decount and click on OK and the database is um, this area over here and uh, I'm gonna go just down to row 39 there I've got totals down below uh, and the field that I want to count if you're using the count function you can count any column that has numbers in it Okay, you can't do uh, the first column or second column, but you can do anyone after that. So let's do the third column. And my criteria here, I'm not sure what that is. Let's, that's interesting. Uh, and my criteria here is um, this range up here. Okay, and because I got that extra click in there. So, um, and apparently I've already named that somewhere before. So go ahead and click on that, click on OK. And it should tell us that there are 12 of those stocks. And if we go over here and count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's it. Okay, and this is over 13 minutes long. So um, we're going to stop right here and we will finish the rest of it on a second video.